So now we understand more about nasal polyps, CRS with NP, the underlying inflammatory mechanisms behind it and the role of medication and sinus surgery to treat it. Let's now move on to look at a paradigm shift, the advent of those biologics. Now, as we heard, biologics are a new treatment option for severe patients with chronic rhinosinusitis with NP, and they specifically target the underlying inflammatory process, that is the type 2 inflammatory cascade, and many people have called them a game changer. Let me start with you, Professor Mullall. How, uh, so could you just uh, sort of uh, fill us in uh, again, add a bit more uh, context to this in terms of how biologics actually work and the theoretical advantages to them? Well, as it has been told before, uh, the action of uh, biologicals it's known to, to block some of these molecules, interleukin-5, interleukin-4, in, uh, interleukin-4, interleukin-13, or IgE. Uh, uh, but uh, there are much more actions that still need to know about the mechanism of action. Uh, what the, uh, from the patient's perspectives, the improvement is related to a number of issues. First of all, the improvement of uh, symptoms, uh, improvement of nasal obstruction, rhinorrhea, uh, facial pain or pressure, and mainly the loss of smell, because uh, about 80% of these severe patients, severe and controlled patients, uh, have loss of smell. And the improvement of these symptoms, it's a, a big improvement on their concept of quality of life. Quality of life, it's also the next point. And when we talk about quality of life, we talk about many issues, for example, related to uh, uh, nasal symptoms or uh, ear symptoms, because uh, severe patients also have ear disease, or improvement in sleep, or improvement in mood, or reduction of, of their depression that is caused by the disease. Uh, also, the severity of the disease is reduced, and the patients notice this because they reduce the need of using medications such as short courses of oral steroids that have uh, side effects in the, in the body, or reduce the need of surgery, uh, or, the, or at least the repetitive uh, surgery, and also improves uh, the, not only the upper airways, but also the lower airways. A lot of patients, of these severe patients, two out of three, usually have asthma, and one third usually have aspirin intolerance, that is, is this triad, is the, the most severe and difficult to treat disease in this group of patients. And even there are some studies that demonstrate that this sensitivity to uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can disappear with the, with the constant treatment of these uh, uh, drugs, the biologicals. And all of this makes a big improvement. And some of of improvements, for example, the loss of smell, and in some, using some of these biologicals, improve very fast. There are patients that have been without sense of smell for 10, 15 years, and they uh, notice the improvement on the sense of smell in few days after the first shot of these drugs. Hmm. I mean, it sounds absolutely extraordinary. Alexandra, uh, can I bring you in here? Um, does that story sound right to you? You sort of mentioned at the beginning of the show that biologics had made a, a big difference to you. Just tell us your story. Um, well. As from the moment I, I took it, I, I still remember the month and the year, I, I think it was December 2019. Um, yeah, it was extraordinary. I mean, it is, um, yeah, I, I, I had made a sort of promo film and I, I remember I said, even if it takes out 10 years of my life, um, I, I, I still want to, to use the, the biologic. Um, although, you know, you do not know what are the side effects. Um, but at this moment, yes. Uh, often I ask, I'm still under control of the uh, UMC. 
uh, and I always ask, uh, you give me the next uh, injections because <laughs> I, I am afraid uh, they take it away from me. <laughs> so yes. So ju just in terms of, of what we heard uh, there from uh, Professor Muller, just how, how quickly did they work for you? Uh, if I may just go back to you, Alexandra, how quickly did they take effect? Very quickly. I, I, I think within, well, the, the, the professor mentioned five days. I, I cannot recall the exact, uh, but you have to, have to see the, 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 the hearing aid every, every day putting them in. Um, that was, I, I suddenly, I think it was with one or two weeks, I realized I did not need them anymore. I could hear without <laughs> the hearing aid. I mean, that really quite, is quite extraordinary. Professor Fockins, perhaps I can bring you in here. I mean, clearly, I mean, these are, ama these are amazing stories uh, and the, 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 the way that those symptoms change so quickly. I mean, clearly biologics, as we've heard from multiple people, are, are certainly less invasive uh, than having repeated, recur you know, repeated uh, nose surgery. Uh, I mean, surgery obviously has its place. What's your view on biologics? Well, it, it's a paradigm shift. It's fantastic. It's um, actually for the doctor quite boring because most patients come in and say, oh, I'm fantastic. <laughs> you changed my life. Uh, and, uh, and I always thought I was the good doctor and now it's the biological. <laughs> but just to um, bring a little bit perspective, um, uh, uh, some patients do extremely well and also extremely fast really in days but for some patients it will take months before they work so um i think it's important to mention that point that people are not um start to be upset when after a few weeks uh, the result is not as fantastic as we now describe that's also possible yeah i mean it was interesting i was reading up on on the advent of them when they sort of came uh, into mainstream use and so on and really for many clinicians i think the clinicians from from certainly the testimonials i was reading uh, they were surprised by the, many of the results the results in real life are actually even better than what we saw in the trials. And that's very exceptional because normally the trial is always a little bit better than real life, but here it's the opposite. And I, I was really surprised in the beginning when patients came back after a month and all said, of course, we started with the most severe patients in uh, end of 2019. And they all came in and said, I can smell again. <laughs> I mean, and that is what we all want as physicians, isn't it? And obviously we heard Alexandra's story there, the fact she, she said she, she had that symptom resolution so quickly. Uh, Professor de Corso, perhaps I can just bring you in here. Uh, would you reiterate those comments, your thoughts? So, uh, the, there are surely some obstacles uh, uh, about biologic uh, uh, and the most important is, is uh, high costs and we need to consider that we are talking about a long life uh, long term therapy and uh, currently not all uh, the country in Europe are uh, and around the world are reimbursed the cost of biologics and uh, due to costs, uh, a country are adopting different policy and some country biologics are full reimbursed and uh, uh, in others people have to pay themselves biologics. So uh, this, uh, and in this moment it is clear that opportunity for patients are not the same everywhere. We are lucky in Italy because biologics are fully reimbursed by the government and for this reason uh, the use of biologics in Italy is quickly becoming more and more widespread and now uh, they are used in every corner of the country for severe asthma and for severe chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps. And regarding the latter, only one type of biologic is now approved or uh, reimbursed in the Italy. But in the next months, two more biologic uh, will be reimbursed. And that's why in the near future, we will face the dilemma as to which biologic should be <laughs> chosen in a specific patient. Mm -hmm. And based on the principle of personalized medicine, one does not fit all. I believe that in the 
uh, not too distant future, we will need to improve our ability to uh, immunophenotype the patients in the routine clinical practice, and we need more data to understand in which patient we can obtain the maximum results with a specific biologic. Mm. I think that definition of endotype uh, in routine clinical practice is crucial. Crucial. This is extremely important also to reduce costs because if we, f if we found the best treatment for the best outcome, we could minimize costs related to non-appropriate control of uh, the disease. Yeah, you make some excellent points there. Let me bring in Professor Mullol now. Um, I mean, clearly, obviously, with the high cost, we need to ensure that we're using biologics for the right patients. Uh, that's not easy to do, is it? Uh, who benefits the best and who benefits the least? That's an enormous question, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. And, but we don't have the answers to all of these, to, to which patients will respond better. As uh, Eugenio said, we will probably need the further studies to have biomarkers of response, of good response, or those that don't respond less. From the analysis that we have done in, in the studies that have been produced of phase two and phase three, we have some approach to that. For example, the, the most severe or those that have uh, a big nasal polyposis or, or strong uh, impaired quality of life or severe loss of smell could be in part uh, those that will benefit the most. There is not clear relationship, for example, for type 2 inflammation. It, it is supposed and discussed in asthma that higher eosinophilia in blood will uh, uh, make those patients respond better. This is not so clear in the nose, because there are a couple of three studies that have been conducted uh, on that, and the, and the response is good no matter of the level of eosinophils that you have in the blood and biomarkers. That probably will need some more uh, biomarkers. It is also known that most of these drugs work better after surgery. This is a great discussion if we should use uh, first uh, surgery or uh, together with the biological or after. Uh, there are some countries that uh, the indication is for both patients or both group of patients, those that have received surgery and those who doesn't. But most of the countries have this restriction. You need at least one surgery mm. to make. Probably this, uh, this is an economical uh, issue, but we know that mm. all treatments work much better after a surgery and you can control a high number of patients, maybe 40, 50% of the patients that are severe and controlled with the surgery and then uh, use it the, the, the others that we control it for the treatment with uh, biologicals. And also those that are exposed to multimorbidities, those that have uh, more than one disease, the, or the, they have the same disease expressed in different organs, such as chronic renal sinusitis with nasal polyps and asthma, and the triad with aspirin intolerance. These are those that benefit the more because they even can get these actions of reduction of aspirin sensitivity in, in, in their bodies and uh, the, the, their quality of life, their symptoms, mm. and, and both the upper and the airways uh, uh, lower I was improve a lot. Great. Uh, Professor Han, uh, I mean, we heard there from uh, Professor de Corso about uh, the, the fact that biologics are fully reimbursed uh, in certain countries, not in others. What was the deal in the United States? And also, do you have to go through certain hoops? Do you have to have sinus surgery first before you can use biologics? Or does it depend? Yeah, so in the U.S., we actually have three biologics that are currently approved for nasal polyps. Uh, we suspect that there will be two or three more coming down in the near future that will be approved for nasal polyps. Um, in the U.S., um, a lot of the biologics are covered by the payers or the insurance, but it's very difficult to get through the approval process. It just takes a lot of work. Uh, 
they either have to have surgery, we have to tell them that the, uh, the nasal polyp score, which not every um, otolaryngologist can do, um, sometimes we'll have to document um, use of nasal steroid spray or other topical steroids, which are over the counter. And so if you don't write that in the note, then sometimes that will um, have the insurance deny it. Mm. It, it. We do get it for our patients, but it is very difficult. And um, as you heard earlier, you know, now that we have free biologic, you know, the question is, you know, which biologic do we choose now? So that's the question that we're asking. Um, in the US. Uh, Professor Han, thank you very much and thank you very much indeed to all of you uh, for excellent answers there and providing much needed clarity.